Nasa Yuzaki is a young man who is bleeding on a snowy day, but suddenly a girl appears while he has a flashback of his life while admiring the beauty of this girl. He remembers how everyone mocked him because of his name, Nasa, which was like the National Aeronautics and Space Administration from America. With those mocks, Nasa decided to be better than them and put an effort to overcome these mockeries. Time later, after discussing with his teacher about his future and how Sakura was entering the most privileged high school in Tokyo, the self-proclaimed man who will attain the speed of light faster than Nasa heads back home. With a lot of thoughts spinning around in his head on a snowy day, he encounters his fate. He finds a cute girl on the other side of the road. Infatuated by the girl and without any doubt that talking to her was the reason he was born, he crosses the road. But just as he gets halfway across the road, a truck comes speeding toward him. A terrible blow hits him and everything turns to black until he opens his eyes and sees the girl in front of him covered in blood just like him. It turns out she was the one who took most of the blow, protecting him. She tells the truck driver to take Nasa to a hospital, ignoring her injuries. Nasa tries to reach out to her, but she tells him to just forget about me and vanishes into the night. He thought to himself that it looked like she was Kaguya Hine going back to the moon as she said that before passing out. Nasa quickly wakes up and asks the driver where the girl went, but he tells him that he shouldn't be moving due to his injuries. But this is not the day he can waste time, he must find her. He runs off to find the mystery girl in the snowy blizzard despite his worsening condition. He eventually finds her at a bus stop. The girl is taken aback by his actions and simply tells him to sit down. Nasa starts getting very embarrassed from being so close to her and even more so when she gives him her coat. Seeing his condition take a turn, she decides to go get someone to help him just as his injuries start to get worse. But he cannot miss this opportunity and he tells her how he thought she was Kaguya Haim and recounts how in her story the Emperor and Old Man should have tried harder to stop her from going back to the moon. Conclusion? He finally works up the courage to confess his feeling to the girl and asks her to go out with him. After a moment of silence, she turns around and tells him that if he marries her, she'll go out with him. He doesn't hesitate for a second to shout out a strong yes before fainting. He later wakes up in a hospital. As the days go by, Nasa continues to recover and study. After passing his exam in the new year, instead of going to high school, he decides to solely focus on jobs that involve serving customers in the hopes of meeting that girl once again. But that day seemed like it would never come and soon he was living all alone in a small apartment. Two years have passed after Nasa's encounter with the mysterious girl when she suddenly arrives at his place much to his complete and utter shock. She finally introduces herself to him as Tsukasa. After the two of them settle down at the table, Tsukasa takes out a marriage form, completely shocking Nasa. She reminds him about the day they met and how he had agreed to marry her. After reaffirming his determination and feelings for her, Nasa fills out the relevant parts in the form, clearing away any doubt and confusion. He still felt as his common sense couldn't overcome her cute smile. He gives the form back to Tsukasa, who looks it over as she thinks to herself how nice Yuzaki Tsukasa sounds. Even though it is night, the marriage office is open and so Nasa and Tsukasa head out to get their form legitimized with Nasa still a bit unsure if they can simply get married by handing over a piece of paper. As they walk along, Tsukasa muses over how nice her new name sounds, asking Nasa what he thinks. He says that it's a lot better than his, which is written as Hashizora, but is Nasa. He then realizes that she never said anything funny about his name. She tells him that his name is a truly beautiful one. This causes him to think about how unreal this marriage is, but that his desire to marry her is most definitely real. They soon get their marriage finalized and also get a commemorative plan. Tsukasa suggests that they try holding hands now that they are married, and Nasa gets so flustered about holding her hand that he starts to yearn for other things he can now touch, and not just hands, which Tsukasa ends up hearing. Nasa is waiting alone in his apartment for Tsukasa to come back, wrapping his head around the fact that they are now married, and he quickly realizes there is a possibility they will be sleeping on the same bed, and that makes him panic. In the desperation of the moment, he tries to work out a way where the two of them can sleep comfortably on one bed. But Tsukasa soon returns, and much to Nasa's surprise and embarrassment, she finds him hugging a pillow while imagining himself with Tsukasa. She tells him that she went to get her luggage from a coin locker. Nasa then wonders if her family would be worried about her being out so late, but his mysterious wifey says that she doesn't have a home now. Upon hearing this, he decides that having one futon is fine and he can sleep on the floor, but Tsukasa suggests that she stay at a hotel for the night. Nasa seems displeased with the idea until she tells him that since she is his wife, she won't be going anywhere, causing him to be completely taken aback by her words. He then wonders why she became his wife in the first place and asks her why she married him. But she says that it's a secret, much to his annoyance. He tells her that they can buy a second futon, so she doesn't have to go. She agrees to this as long as they can try out a memory foam one. They visit a store to buy one with Tsukasa asking if this will be Nasa's first present to her, to which he answers yes. Once they come back home, a sudden existential question crosses Nasa's mind about marriage. Nasa is quite overwrought with a girl roaming in his apartment. Anyway, it's time to catch some sleep and so they finally both start to settle down for sleep. Unfortunately, he is unable to get any proper sleep due to being completely distracted by her. 
After watching her toss and turn while sleeping, Nasa wonders if he should give her a goodnight kiss, but decides against it as our romantic protagonist wants their first kiss to be different. Sakasa then suddenly gets up for a drink and upon returning to her futon, falls asleep atop his bed, pulling the covers off as she slides back down to ground level. Long story short, Nasa can't sleep at all with his wifey so close. The next morning, Nasa wakes up first can't unsee his sleepy wifey unsing in front of him. He notices that without realizing it, things have changed quite a lot from the day before and now there's a certain person in the same room. It is early morning and after getting up and changed, Tsukasa decides to get them breakfast. When she takes a look inside Nasa's fridge, she became quite surprised at the amount of food he has all labeled and well organized. He tells her that he studied dietetics and worked out the best meal for him was hot pot every day and got the same taste every day. Unimpressed by this, Tsukasa tells him to wait while she prepares better food. After 10 minutes, they sit down to eat, with Nasa surprised by the amazing results she produced. Once they've finished their meal, they decide to go to the nearest bathhouse as Nasa's apartment doesn't have a bath and he knows the owners well, with our hoping Nasa wanting to see Tsukasa after she takes a bath. And so they head out and after buying various things for Tsukasa, they arrive at the Arisogawa bathhouse with two sisters. Let's start with Kaname Arisogawa, who is already working when they arrive and is completely shocked that Nasa has brought a girl with him. Indeed, she thought he studied so much that his libido withered away. She likes dirty jokes and in particular, she is not a delicate young girl. Intrigued by the situation, she then asks if they are dating, but Nasa instead tells her that the two of them are married, shocking her even more. After congratulating them, Kaname invites Shukasa in to take a bath. Nasa attempts to go in as well, but is stopped by Kaname who demands an explanation for what is going on with this girl, as in her mind, Nasa could not get a girlfriend and she also dreams about him reaching 30-something years and believing he is a wizard. Kaname then asks if he's told Aya, Kaname's sister. He says that he hasn't. She tells him that she won't tell Aya and ask when the ceremony is, but Nasa says that he hadn't thought about one or getting rings. After hearing that he hasn't even proposed to Tsukasa, Kaname tells him that since he decided to marry her, he has to make her happy. Filled with new resolve, Nasa declares that he will make her happy because he loves his wifey, who walks out at this very moment to get her things and hears what he just said, much to both of their embarrassment. Once inside the bathhouse, something is twisting around in Nasa's mind, by the definition of a bath episode, he must act normally and a wife will appear in front of him, or at least this is so in Nasa's mind. But for our boy, the world is harder than he thinks and a little teenager who likes peeking appears instead. Meanwhile, Tsukasa is enjoying her bath until Kaname's sister appears in the bath with her. She introduces herself as the eldest daughter of the bathhouse. She apologizes for watching Tsukasa while she was bathing and asks if she would like her back wiped to make up for it. After some persuasion, as Tsukasa doesn't like being touched, she takes her up on the offer. The girl remarks on how beautiful Tsukasa's skin is comparing it to silk, but then realizes silk is a cloth that comes from silkworms, and no matter how pretty her skin is, comparing it to insect excrement is not the right choice. Instead, she decides to compare it to an iPhone X for reasons unknown to Tsukasa. The girl then gives her name as Arisogawa Aya, and Tsukasa introduces herself as Yuzaki Tsukasa with Aya assuming she's Nasa's little sister. After Nasa's bath, Tsukasa meets back up with him and is accompanied by Kaname's older sister. Due to the earlier misunderstanding, Aya doesn't realize that the two of them are married and neither of them is aware of this. Tsukasa is told how Nasa helped support the Arisogawa family and their business after they fell on hard times. Tsukasa appears disappointed with hearing how grateful Aya is to Nasa, but he doesn't notice this. The two of them then leave the bathhouse and head back home. Tsukasa says how cute Aya seems to be with Nasa completely agreeing with her and not realizing his poor choice of words. Just as he realizes this, he sees her looking at a church wedding and remembers what Kanim told him about their marriage. He asks if she is concerned about that thing, but she assumes he is talking about Aya and gets the wrong idea. Tsukasa, awaiting Nasa's return, decides to clean the place but finds out much to her surprise that her capable hubby has already cleaned everything in plain sight, and she doesn't want to risk seeing what sort of secret things he might have hidden away. And so we will never find out if Nasa is a pr So there is another thing that can be done around the house, cooking. But soon the doorbell rings and Shukasa, who assumes it's Nasa, goes to answer only to be greeted by a young girl, Shitos Kajinoji, Tsukasa's sister, but not her real sister. Indeed, she refers to Tsukasa as her sister, and says how the place Tsukasa is now staying in is a shabby apartment complex and doesn't suit her. Before she can finish, Tsukasa peacefully shuts the door in her face. But the small girl starts weeping so hard that Tsukasa decides to open the door again. The reason Shitos came looking for Tsukasa is that their granddaunt, Tokiko Tsukiyomi, is worried. Indeed, Tokiko knew Tsukasa's location and Chitos forced her to give up Tsukasa's position and meet her without Tokiko's permission. All of that was for the sake of her niece Sama. But Tsukasa can't see any reason for Tokiko's involvement and ends Chitos' attempts to bring her back by telling her she is now married. Nasa arrives and finds Chitos, who, wowed by his kindred spirit, decides to tell him what happened and describes the person she has problems with. 
And just when she starts appreciating the fact that he was randomly listening to a depressed middle school girl, she heard a loud, oh dear, from Tsukasa who popped out behind her and so she quickly realizes Nessa is Tsukasa's husband. Tsukasa tells Nessa that the girl is Shito's Kajinoji, a girl who was taken in by her family. Nasa casually introduces himself to her and starts a conversation despite Shitose's protests. She states that she will not accept him as Tsukasa's partner in marriage. Surprisingly, he shows his good communication skills by saying she's not wrong for thinking that, due to how sudden it all was. But Shitose won't simply accept that and she does the most obvious thing to do in these cases, she kicks Nasa to Chitose's villa. In there, she's classy and won't stoop to torture, as there are other better ways to wreck his marriage. Shadows, more convinced than ever before with the help of her maids, Aurora and Charlotte, wants to get Nasa into a cheater. But when Charlotte took the Iran way too seriously, her confidence crumbles and after losing time with the confusing chats, she loses sight of Nasa who flees into the mansion. Nasa starts looking for Tsukasa's room as he assumes she lived there and finally finds one with her smell. Inside, he notices a glass case with a moonstone and his surprise could only grow when Charlotte appears with a large sword breaking her way into the room and telling him that he isn't allowed in there. She proceeds to start attacking him, but Chitos and Aurora arrive shouting at her not to be so reckless in that room. Unfortunately, she ends up damaging the case with the Moonstone in it. Nasa, however, quickly manages to fix it, preserving the Moonstone, and also works out from Chitos' reaction that the stone is real. She tells him that their grandaunt borrowed it to ease Shukasa. Upon hearing Nasa's confusion about this, she realizes that he doesn't know what Shukasa is and asks if he knows anything about her past. He answers that he doesn't, which causes Chitos to get angry that her sister married someone who knew nothing about her. Charlotte intervenes, saying that Nessa did save Tsukasa's moonstone and hugs him as thanks, but Aurora takes this chance to take a picture of them and edits it to make it look indecent. Just then, Tsukasa appears taking the picture and remarking about how nice it looks, much to Nessa's shock. Chitos tells her to get a divorce because of how terrible he is. She seems to agree to this, telling him to follow her so they can talk it over. Once they leave the room, it becomes clear that they flood instead. Indeed, Tsukasa reveals that she was just pretending so they could escape, and if she was mad, things would be much worse for him. They soon find themselves in an old church built in the Meiji era. Seeing her so bright and happy, Nasa realizes what devotion is. He starts to tell her that, if something good happens to him, she'll be the first to know. If something bad happens to her, he'll carry the burden with her. They'll share everything, support each other, and that he doesn't want her to ever regret choosing him as her husband. And if this sounds like a proposal, it is because it is one, and what better way of sealing it than a kiss after squaring to give her his eternal love? Tsukasa loves movies, games, and pop culture in general, and the absence of a television in Nasa's apartment is seriously undermining the foundations of their marriage. Furthermore, Nasa has little knowledge of films. To overcome such a prominent lack of culture in Nasa's life and save the marriage, there is only one possible solution, buy a new TV. Indeed, Tsukasa can't stop talking about movies and TV shows in front of Nasa, and it is not like she's trying to push her hobbies into Nasa's mind. Well, actually, she is but she wants to be able to share her excitement with him as they watch a new series shortly. All this talk about films in Anime, her great passion, makes her more lively and Meza likes this new side of his wife he has never seen. At the Arisagawa bathhouse, Tsukasa is taking a bath while Nasa is talking with Kanan. As Kanan suggested to Nasa, the couple needs the rings. They show their love and there is that diamond thing they swear their love to, but Nasa doesn't know little particular. There are two types of rings when one talks about marriage, engagement rings and wedding rings. Engagement rings are the basic things you give to girls when you are proposing, the expensive ones while wedding rings are the paired rings that men and women put on their ring fingers. On the way back home, Tsukasa convinces Nasa to stop by a public park and airily sit on a bench, and once he realizes that he doesn't take too long to steal a kiss from Tsukasa's lips in broad daylight. And a kiss out in the open is a good step forward for our couple, even though Tsukasa can't help but call the bold hubby a perv. Nasa goes back to talk about the rings again. They are already married and so the engagement rings aren't needed. Nasa wants them to show their powerful love, but our clumsy boy doesn't know how much a diamond ring can cost in real life. She knows and refuses the idea to buy them. She convinces him to go to the most expensive jewelry store to show her point, but Nasa almost bought the most expensive one and she drags him out. Nasa explains that as long as they have a ring that shows their eternal love, they can feel each other nearby even when they are apart. Long story short, he wants to buy them for Tsukasa, as she is feeling quite lonely while he is at work, and once she realizes that, to make Nasa happy, she accepts buying them, but only the cheapest ones. As she will remember that day, whenever she looks at that ring, she will remember how her hubby nearly spent a fortune on their rings, but in the end, they bought the cheapest ones. But most importantly, she will remember how kind Nessa is and how much he cares about her. Tsukasa puts her hair up every evening before bed, but as she moves a lot while sleeping, they come loose almost instantly. Also, she's a sleepwalker and always goes to drink water in the middle of the night while half asleep, and on her way back, she usually tries to grab Nasa's covers and then falls asleep in her fupin. This is her usual sleepwalker routine. 
But not this time as she goes into NASA's bed instead of her feudin, and so our poor boy can't catch any sleep tonight. The situation is too much to bear for NASA and ends when Sukasa, turning around starts staring at NASA who, panicking inside, doesn't understand if she is awake or not. She kisses him and rolls back on her feudin. He didn't sleep a wink after that. In the morning, NASA, thrilled by the previous events, is daydreaming of sleeping in the same bed as Sukasa. Indeed, he is willing to buy a new larger apartment. They'll be tight to sleep if they both stay in the same room for too long and sleeping is a pain because they sleep on different beds and Shikasa is a sleepwalker. Even though Shikasa was okay with the actual apartment, a good reason to relocate shows up on its own. NASA's apartment is too small for the two of them. There is a big but before they buy a new home. They need a guarantor. It could easily be NASA's parents and NASA never told them about their marriage. Therefore, a phone call is needed and even though the first reply were sounds he has never heard before, his mom calms down once she hears his wife is this super cute girl who saved his life. After the call, Tsukasa decides that she would like to meet Nasa's parents but he is unsure about introducing her to them due to how weird it could be. However, Nasa's mom texts him saying that if they don't come to visit, she won't be their guarantor. Faced with this, Nasa relents and the two of them decide to go to Nara to visit his parents. Indeed, Nasa's parents aren't from Tokyo but from Nara, and news of their future travel to Nara quickly reaches Chikos through her spy maids. Shikasa also decides to get a camera for the journey and their everyday lives to make their secret wedding diary and even though the purchase was meant for her, Nasa's lust awakens and hubby can't stop taking photos of his wife, so she confiscates the camera. They haven't had a honeymoon yet and so this seems like the perfect occasion. They will feed two birds with one scone, meet Nasa's parents and enjoy some time together. They decide to take a late night bus to Kyoto because it was way cheaper than the train. Meanwhile, Shitos and her two maids are chasing them. Chitos hasn't accepted their marriage yet and is hoping it ends. Once the bus stops at a late night service area, Chitos with her maids is eager to find any rifts between Nasa and Shukasa's love. She thinks that even small problems can put an end to a male-female relationship. Also, she believes that there is no need to cause any of them. In effect, these problems start on their own, but as soon as a problem seems to appear real, making Chitos all excited, it disappears in a blink of an eye. They turn every little problem into a new and unique way of flirting, making Chitos' plan more and more pointless over time. While Chitos is plotting her plan, Tsukasa and Nasa are deciding what to eat. And while Nasa is willing to eat something from a chain restaurant, Tsukasa exhorts him to try something else, as he can eat that stuff back at home. Following her reasoning, Tsukasa, who was very observant, chews her will lime udon, as they were suggested by Hiramendesu. It tastes like someone put some lime slices on top of cold udon. It's exactly what you would expect, to the point that it is unexpected. The only thing that could spice it up is the lime that hubby challenges her to eat. Chitos, annoyed by their continuous flirting while Nasa was absent, makes her first move and appears in front of Tsukasa, who was sitting all alone. She suddenly starts a tough discussion, asking her what she's even doing there and that she is not a normal girl. But when the discussion starts bending on Tsukasa's past, a Harunandesu reporter appears. Fearing that appearing on TV might alert Tokiko, the trio runs away. Also, the bus is about to pull out and so, Nasa and Tsukasa decide to leave with Chitos shouting after them, asking Tsukasa why she's even getting married. Back on the bus, Nasa wonders about what Chitos said, but Tsukasa reassures him saying that it's only natural some people would oppose their marriage and she wonders if his parents would be the same. But he tells her that he's sure he can convince them. The next morning, they arrive in Kyoto with Nasa excited about the potential of doing some sightseeing there after visiting his parents in Nara. But Tsukasa's suggestions of going to a bakery or the manga museum deflate his enthusiasm, and he asks if she's not interested in seeing the historical landmarks. After seeing Nasa's disappointment, she agrees to see them. Suddenly, Chitos stubbornly wants a confrontation with them. As long as she doesn't accept the marriage, she will not allow their relationship. This improvised situation makes Nasa think things over. He wants to make his marriage happy for everyone and so, he invites Chitos to talk with just the two of them. But he isn't the only one who has had an idea. With the main target to show the world how much of a pathetic fool Nasa is, Chitos will play Nasa's lover, and depending on his performance, she will see if he is a worthy man or not. But Nasa has done a lot of research and he takes Chitos to a lot of nice places. But she was more well by his organization and his kind character, rather than anything else. Though his strong character makes her dubious again, mostly the fact that he doesn't know anything about Tsukasa. This irritates her a lot. Nasa evaluates the little things he knows about his wife and he thinks that his meeting with Tsukasa was fate. But Chitos still doesn't see this as a good reason and she thinks that fate is just something illusory and a hunch at the end of the day. He doesn't know, but she said she'd go back to Tokyo for now. Tsukasa is worried she will not be able to get along with Nasa's parents. But Hubby doesn't believe so as he will be the one to introduce her and he will make sure they know she is the cutest girl in the universe. Late in the evening, their taxi finally arrives at the home of Nasa's parents with both of them very nervous at meeting them. Nasa's mother, Kanoka, starts to open the door but is too flustered to see her son's wife and quickly goes back inside. 
NASA manages to convince her to meet Tsukasa and asks where his dad is, to which Kanoka replies that he's in the living area and hasn't moved since the morning. They all go inside with Tsukasa being introduced to NASA's father, Enishi. After some awkward silence, Enishi asks NASA if he'd like to go take a bath, but NASA is very wary about leaving Tsukasa alone with his parents. She tells him it's fine if they want to talk to her. So he leaves still sounding a bit unsure. After NASA leaves the room, Enishi suddenly prostrates himself before Tsukasa, thanking her for saving NASA's life. He continues by saying how proud he and Kanoka are for raising such a good son despite their faults, and if he decided to marry the person who saved his life, they have nothing else to give besides happy tidings and best of luck. Enishi finishes off by asking that she take care of NASA from now on. Tsukasa thanks him for his gracious words and asks that they also take care of her from now on. As they get ready for bed, Kanoka tells NASA that they put in an extra futon for Tsukasa and warns him not to get too carried away, since they will be sleeping in the next room over. NASA quickly realizes what she meant and gets completely flustered by the situation presented to him. This time, they are both sleeping on a futon and there isn't any height problem between them like before. And so his wife is now right there with her guard down, just within his reach in a futon next to him. That we soon realizes how painful it is and his arm doesn't take long to become numb. On the other hand, Wifey is so close to him that he can perceive her body warmth and smell. The fragile equilibrium easily breaks and NASA then asks for a good night kiss instead, which Tsukasa agrees to albeit very embarrassingly. The next morning after waking up and going outside, Tsukasa is met by Enishi who has trouble working out what to talk about with just the two of them. Tsukasa then mentions him being an archaeologist, which NASA had told her before. Upon hearing this, Enishi excitedly takes her to his study. There she surprises him by being able to read a book that supposedly he had never been able to understand before. NASA soon arrives in the study and is surprised to see Tsukasa there due to her apparent dislike of historical things. In the afternoon, NASA and Tsukasa finally get down to doing some sightseeing, with Tsukasa deciding that visiting historical sites with NASA will make them more interesting. They visit the Narabuda and the Harayuji, taking pictures of each one. After visiting the site where the ruins of Hajukia once stood, Tsukasa starts talking about how 1300 years ago so many people lived there going about their daily lives, but she quickly brushes this aside, and they decide to film a funny video instead. Later, they bid farewell to NASA's parents as they head back to Tokyo. However, upon arriving back at their apartment, they find that it has completely burnt down. NASA's apartment has completely burnt down and the plant commemorating their marriage is miraculously intact and NASA is very relieved. He's already organized and his bank book and other important things are in a safety deposit box. NASA and Tsukasa have nowhere to go and Kaneim kindly offers for them to stay at the Arisagawa bathhouse until they find a new place. Kaneim thinks that hosting NASA and Tsukasa at the bathhouse is a nice way to thank NASA for everything he has done for the place. Luckily, there is a pretty big building they don't use in the bathhouse and it already has two futons and some furniture. Tsukasa thinks not. Indeed, she thinks that if people reach out right away when you are in trouble, it is a sign that you are well-liked and NASA is well-liked by them. On the other hand, NASA likes how Tsukasa pays him a lot of attention. NASA and Tsukasa living at the Arisagawa bathhouse are fine for everyone who lives there, Kaname, Aya, and her mom. Aya has a crush on him, but she doesn't realize yet that he is now married. She is such an airhead and she still hasn't realized it. And so, during a normal evening in which Aya was peacefully misunderstanding, like always, the fact that Tsukasa and NASA are married, she casually discovers that NASA Kun and Tsukasa Chen have the same last name. And just when one might think how long she will continue to misunderstand things, Aya's mom pops up with a simple statement. So if your wife, Nasa Kun, destroys her daughter's heart in a blink of an eye. Aya's brain can't stand this giant information, and she starts screaming. To make things worse, after her mom realized Aya didn't know, she coughs up the fact that Aya liked Nasa in the presence of everyone. Aya first learned about him during math class when she was 10. There was this problem nobody could solve, and just solved it like it was nothing. But she has never dared to confess her feelings to Nasa. However, she decides not to sulk over this situation, so her first love isn't meaningless. And with courage and pride, she congratulates them on their marriage. Nasa and Tsukasa have a bunch of dirty clothes, and so Tsukasa will want to do some laundry, and Nasa is willing to go alone to a coin laundry. But Tsukasa has one problem, and it will be embarrassing to let him see her underwear. They decide to both go to the coin laundry owned by the Arisagawa family, and Nasa can't help noticing that Tsukasa is wearing a tracksuit. She doesn't have other clothes to wear, as a lot of them burn in the fire, and the ones which survived are now being washed. But that is not all, as she also hasn't got anything under the tracksuit act, and Nasa is quite turned on and can't stop himself from taking a photo of an embarrassed wifey. According to Kaname's suggestion, girls can stay cute for a long time because they always strive to look cute, and once a husband stops helping his wife stay cute, the girl will change from your cute wife into your average roommate buddy. And so it's shopping time, and he's delighted until she offers for him to choose the new dresses for her, and the pure maiden taste of Nasa shows up in the blink of an eye. But there is something else she needs to buy, and once in the shop, 
NASA's Fermis starts to crumble. NASA and Shukasim brought out everything that was in the storage space to their room. That building used to be where Kaname's dad did all his nerd stuff, and there are all kinds of things they can use now even though they have all the basic things to live from now on. Their room seems old-fashioned. Kaname got a musmolon from a customer and wondering if the two wanted it. Once ascertained that it looks good, she quickly leaves as she would hate to get in their way. Not before telling them she doesn't think the sound carries to the house. Without Kaname, it's just the two of them and NASA seems eager to try all kinds of embarrassing things he wants. The next morning, NASA receives a call from his former landlord asking him if he was interested in moving into a new place he's built. But NASA hadn't come to a decision yet even though he thinks that they can't keep staying in debt to the Arisagoa family for much longer. However, Kaname is trying to convince NASA and Shukasa not to leave, although she realizes that living here probably makes it hard to get it on. On the other hand, she very quickly changes her mind. They are building a new apartment on top of the lot where the last one burned down and NASA's landlord offered to let them move in without any security deposit or initial fee, along with keeping the same rent he had before. With such a good offer, they can't deny at least a visit to another apartment that is identical to what their next apartment will be. Sukasa, taken by enthusiasm, suggests acting like a celeb couple. The apartment was beautiful and the view from above even more so. A bathtub where you can see outside when you take a bath quickly takes their attention as Sukasa would like a normal one in their new apartment, and in Nasa's mind, a lustful thought about them taking a bath together is twisting around. After the bathroom comes the bedroom that has a huge double-sized bed and with it comes a question from Nasa. Want to sleep on one bed? Nasa asked nervously. Even more shyly, Sukasa says yes. It sounds like an improvement. After they checked out the apartment, the landlord called saying it was not their apartment and there was a mistake. Kaneya Marisugawa starts early in the morning. She wakes up every day at 5.30 to get the bathhouse ready and says balancing it with high school is very tough. But now there is someone new, Sukasa, and she is more than happy to help her. Even though Kanem refuses her help, Sukasa insists as it pains her to leave her debt to Kanem unpaid. And unlike Nasa Kun, she never had the chance to get along with Kanem's family. Kanem, who can't defy Sukasa's smile, gives up and accepts her offer. With the help of Sukasa, the cleaning ends earlier, and Kanem takes advantage of this to thank Sukasa not only for that, but deeply from her heart for saving Nasa, as she has never had the chance to say it to her. Kaneng starts to understand a bit more why Nasa fell in love with her. When Chitos returns to Nasa's apartment, she soon finds out that nothing is left, it burned down. And just when Chitos was pointing out the fact that Tsukasa always disappears all the time for no reason, she quietly pops out walking in the street. Even though Chitos is relieved to find out she is unharmed, she still has a solid question twisting through her mind. Where is Tsukasa living? Tsukasa tries to elude her questions, but Chitos's unceasing questions force her to say where she lives. Sukasa easily teases Chitos, convincing her that she has electricity and gas in a playground. Once distracted, she gains time to disappear again and goes home. But this time, Chitos reacts in time and follows her to the Arisugawa bathhouse. As soon as she enters, she finds Sukasa, Nasa, and Kaname, who were discussing the idea of a takoyaki party, apparently the favorite pastime of cool young people. Kaname tirelessly starts asking questions about why and how she lives there. Sukasa sleeps every night on the reception floor of the Arisugawa bathhouse with milk bottles as a pillow. Though the prank doesn't last long as Nasa feels bad for Chitos, as she is way too naive. Since Chitos' maids have never been in a bathhouse before and are guileless and now nervous, Kaneem proposes they take a relaxing bath to cool their heads. And after a nice, calm, and refreshing bath, she greets everyone and leaves. She quickly realizes that they have tricked her once again. Since they are all there, why don't they all attend the taco party, as Kaneem suggests to them. Also, Sukasa hasn't talked with Aya much and this would be a nice chance to get to know her better. Aya is extremely happy and joins the party to test if Tsukasa is good enough to be Nasa's wife. But food is supposed to taste good, not just look good, and indeed it is, and Aya can't help but compliment Tsukasa. It all tastes super good, and now, her conviction is starting to crumble. It's not like Aya picked something she's good at, just to be better than Tsukasa. Street Fighter V is a fundamental pillar of a solid marriage, and even though the takoyaki party hasn't had a single takoyaki yet, a video game tournament begins. Though the absence of an award highlights the need for one, Nasa, and he will also perform any task asked by the winner. As she gets destroyed by Aya, as Tsukasa hates to lose, and with a change of console and controller starts to win, and in the end, a double KO marks a draw in their competition, with mutual appreciation of their skills. Time passes, and Nasa now is working hard so hard that he tends to be one of those people who never know when to step on the brakes while at work indeed. He's working relentlessly as always, so hard that he couldn't even notice being unwell. Luckily, there is his cute, considerate wife who promptly notices his red face and once she takes his temperature, the worrisome 39.8 degrees Celsius, she and our dumb workaholic protagonist become concerned. And so despite Nasa's objections, his cute newly wife sees reason and is going to look after hubby until he gets better. Indeed, according to Sukasa, Nasa doesn't have to worry about her, as she doesn't get hurt or sick. 
She is too tender to stop her care and Nessa is now feeling better and wants to change his clothes. He sweated a lot and it is probably better if he wipes his body before. Shikasa asked to do it for him and even though Nessa and his shyness were contrary to it, in the end, they surrendered. Though the bottom part is a no-no, though the discussion being too much for both of them to bear ends abruptly. Nessa's cold has gotten a lot better even though he still has a bit of a fever. He rarely gets sick and this sudden fever surprised even him. However, as Tsukasa makes him notice, it must say that he never gets sick or injured because he just doesn't realize it. When he chased Tsukasa while being heavily injured in the middle of the snowstorm is a good one. However, there is Tsukasa now and her concerns about his health make him reconsider his breaks when working too much. Anyway, it's time to catch some Z's for our favorite couple as it is quite late. Though Tsukasa can't sleep as she is really worried about Nasa's health and can't hug Nasa in his fufin. And with that, a confession comes up from Nasa to lift Tsukasa's mood. He wanted to go with her to the summer festival. As Kenning suggests, if Tsukasa is going to the summer festival, she should probably wear a yukata as is customary for couples and also the ailing hubby is gonna feel tons better if she wears it. The summer festival is that evening and Tsukasa is gonna change into her yukata right now. But in the same room, there is also a desirous hubby. He must look the other way while she is changing. But something is buzzing in Nasa's mind. Is he not allowed to watch? Indeed, after all, he is her husband. And once she realizes the odds of him taking a peek, she permits it even though only for a bit. That of that bit quickly becomes a radiography of Tsukasa's body and he can't resist saying how pretty she is with the yukata. The festival is quite lively and there are a lot of night stalls open and from all, Tsukasa wants to stop the takoyaki one. They recently threw a takoyaki party, but she prefers the ones that are not fried at all and a stall sells them. They enjoy the peaceful evening. All the emotions gathered up during the night, with the fireworks blooming in the sky, making Nasa think deeply about how much he loves his current life and wife. Days pass, and Nasa finally gives Tsukasa a phone of her own, delighting her to astral levels by Tsukasa stating that she will become famous. After configuring her phone, Nasa adds Tsukasa as her wife to his contacts, and Tsukasa does the same. Later, Tsukasa talks with Kaname, who also adds her in line, showing her sexy radish profile picture, and also Aya adds Tsukasa and shows her animated crush. After a while, Nasa is called to go back to his old job to help the manager who is having trouble with something and even with Tsukasa's disapproval, she wishes him good luck and hopes for him to come back home early. Then Tsukasa spends her day waiting for him to message him by contemplating first sending him a sticker with the bunny saying, I miss you so much that I would die, which she decides not to do since it would distract Nasa. The rest of the day goes by like that even with her becoming nostalgic about the fact that her husband didn't send a message the whole day so she assumes that he will not come home early and finally receives a message from him telling her that he misses her too much but he won't go home at night but in the next morning. Then Shukasa starts by putting the feud in but accidentally puts the two of them so she feels more nostalgic. At 3 a.m. Nasa goes back to his home being as quiet as possible for not awakening her dear wife but Tsukasa is awake and welcomes him since she couldn't sleep at all. They both go to bed, but first Shukasa gives him his night kiss and then asks him if she can go to his futon, which developed into passionate kisses from the two of them as she states that she missed him too much. Nasa thinks that this may be the opportunity to go to the next level, but Tsukasa acts too cute for that, and they end up hugging instead. The next morning, Tsukasa reflects on how weird she acted at that moment and cringes herself, but Kaname interrupts her thoughts by saying if they did have some action while she was sleeping, Tsukasa denies it and declares it's normal for marriage as couple, which Kaname asks her to let her see them while they're doing it since Aya had the opportunity to listen to them while playing. They're interrupted by Nasa who is shy around Tsukasa while greeting them. Elsewhere, Charlotte is waking up Chitos, and when she's already wake up, she tells her the news she was there when Tsukasa and Kaname were talking, which makes Chitos spit out her tea but states that they're a married couple, so this is normal. At night, Charlotte messes up with Aurora before going to sleep. The sun rises, and it's morning. Tsukasa gives a morning kiss to Nasa, which stuns Nessa, who still isn't used to them. Now Tsukasa is playing video games while Nasa is working, which makes Tsukasa intrigue, as she would never be as focused as Nasa. So she decides to test him by changing the channel to one with mind games, which initiates with a complicated question. While Tsukasa had a problem with that, Nasa did answer it without even looking at the tev, which makes Tsukasa think for a brief moment that he was probably just smashing randomly at the keyboard, but no. Aya arrived along with Charlotte and both also wanted to pressure the focus of Nasa, so they continue to look at the program with another question about chocolates, thinking that maybe Nasa couldn't answer it, but he answered anyway without looking once again. So the trio assembles a strategic reunion, which concluded with Charlotte proposing Tsukasa to wear a maid costume and Aya pleading Tsukasa to do so. The final question began and they made the shout down with Tsukasa posing as a maid and talking to Nasa maid-like which deconcentrated him for a brief moment since he still answered the last question with that type of stimulation which makes Aya and Charlotte disappointed and both of them make a tantrum as they consider unfair the fact that he still managed to compose himself with his wife dressed as a maid. 
Later at night, NASA discusses with Tsukasa the fact that he loved her dress as a maid and that he would enjoy it if she could dress like that. More often, Tsukasa replies that Charlotte left that uniform there. The next day, NASA talks with Kaname and tells her about his f***ges like doctors and glasses and also school uniform, which is overheard by Aya who explains that dating in school uniforms is now a movement and Kaname, being the p*** she is, encourages them to follow their dreams. So Aya convinces Tsukasa to wear one that night. That night, Tsukasa borrows Kaname's uniform and acts like the stereotype of a high school girl in front of her husband. This arises the horse of NASA, who after the demonstration asks Tsukasa one more time to dress as a high school girl. So she does NASA ask her if he can touch her. Tsukasa replies that this is a no-hand establishment, but he can remove her stockings, which he does, and they kiss. The following day, NASA awakes from a dream where Tsukasa wakes him up in a high school uniform and she tells him that he looked having a pretty nice dream. NASA wakes up late and Tsukasa is surprised by it as he is an early bird person, so she kisses him saying that the breakfast is ready which still surprises NASA to this point. After breakfast, NASA starts to work with his wife next to him. She watches a film that she does not like, asks her why, and she states that she liked it because it had good characters, a good father-son relationship, and a cool ending, but her house does not relate to that. But she wanted to see a scene out of action that would fire her imagination. He suggests to her that she can move to the cinema early when she has finished her work. Blushing on arrival, our protagonist thinks this is a special occasion, so he chooses a large, trustworthy cinema. In the room, they go downstairs and they see the beautiful seas of the place. They want to buy popcorn, however, he is asked not to as it would be very dangerous because the film is two and a half hours long and it would be bad for her to go to the toilet at one point and miss a scene with her husband. She does what she wants and looks at their faces of bewilderment, surprise, anger, nervousness, and emotion as she reaches the climax of the film. When the protagonist arrives at the bathhouse is a conversation with Sonata about the wedding, and that she's not worried about not doing it, because it's normal nowadays not to do it, making it at Supersaho wants a wedding. He wants a wedding more than anything else to see his wife in a wedding dress, bringing the young couple is born the question of having a wedding, but his wife refuses the event as she considers it very embarrassing for the couple, and it's a lot of expense to what Nesa but wants to do it, so he says they will do it in the next week, then Tsukasa asks him how to do it by making a simulation. So he does a funny simulation where he only called and the wedding appeared. Shikasa is concerned about his heir and husband, so she asks him expecting him to ask about the price so he doesn't assume it costs at least 150. Then Shikasa drags him with Kanem who asks how much he has and he had around $1,500 in yen, which surprised the young woman. Kanem then showed him the cost of a good place for the service. It costs 7 million yen or $75,000, which surprised the protagonist and with that money, he could buy a car, a house, or at least an urban apartment would have been better, he exclaimed. He was disappointed that he thought it was cheap and easy. Then we see Chitos exercising with her servants as Charlotte asks Chitos if there's gonna be a wedding ever between Nasa and Tsukasa, Chitos doesn't know, but if in the future is gonna be one, she would go only to support Tsukasa even without liking Nasa. Elsewhere, Nasa's teacher notices that since the young high schooler's junior year, the overall grades in the class have gone down, which puts her in the predicament of trying to improve their grades. One of her colleagues tries to prevent her from leaving, but the woman refuses, telling him that she has no time for such things like dating since her location is to work on her way home. The woman wonders what will become of Nasa's life and only hopes that like many boys and boys dropping out of school, he has not become a delinquent by chance the woman meets her former pupil and discovers that Nasa has been married so expecting the worst, she explains him to meet his wife. At Nasa's home, his wife receives the woman and invites her, the teacher tries to look for something negative in the young woman, but doesn't find it, so she congratulates both of them. Before leaving, she asks Nasa what his life is going to be like and what the future holds for him. To go to high school and look for a job for the moment, but he just wants to be with his wife and enjoy the moment. The young man's words echo in her head, so she said she would phone her partner and accept the invitation to the cinema. A customer arrives at the bathhouse and interrupts the conversation. The client has a sinister look that could make him a Yakuza. The man tells the woman that he comes to see Nasa as he has unfinished business with him, but his Tsukasa doesn't like his attitude, so he refuses to tell him where he is and tells him that if he doesn't plan to take a bath, he should leave. The two argue and the man buys a ticket for the bath. When Nasa arrives and sees the situation, he is happy to see his cousin, Ginga. The mysterious name greets his cousin. When he learns that his house is his wife, he apologizes to both of them, proving that he is a good boy, as in currently in a good student in preparatory school, only that he has a sinister look. Ginga asks why Nasa got married and asks him as proof of his love he kisses his wife. The young man accepts but is quickly interrupted by Ginga who accepts that their love is true. He then tells that he and his friends found an abandoned cat in the street. Nasa takes control of the situation and takes the animal to a veterinarian where he demands that all the studies to improve his animal, his wife is shocked by the intensity of her husband who cares about taking care of a cat that much. Nasa realizes that once the cat leaves the vet, it will have to give it a home. So Massa offers to look after it. So Massa makes an enormous list of things the cat needs for Jinga, who is eager to do the job. 
At night, Nasa doesn't appreciate the cat's attitude. Once he has finished eating, he loses all interest in him. He walks away with a flat stare and goes to sleep on the shoulder of his wife. But there is still hope for our grief-stricken protagonist in the morning. His wife tells him the fact that the cat calling him for the food means she trusts him. And just like she just wants to be spoiled this way, Nasa now knows that his wife wants to be spoiled and pampered by him. So he tells her that she is also very cute. And the two of them start getting the couple kiss in front of Toast and a shocked woman who was just walking through the door. Toast is his best weapon to win the heart of his beloved wife. Kitten eating her food, our protagonist takes the opportunity to tell his house how much he admires her fresh and soft scent. Nasa manages to get closer to his wife, although he has gained an enemy in the form of a cat who is jealous of the attention his wife is getting. After the cat incident, Jinga gifts Nasa two tickets to an amusement park for his enjoyment. So they went to My Hama Amusement Park the next day. At the park, they noticed that it started to rain, so they buy a raincoat of a cat and a bear, which Nasa enjoys since it makes Tsukasa look cuter than usual. At the same time, Chitos and her maids are at the park and they see the married couple, but Chitos for once prefers to chill and enjoy the park first and later see what are they doing. The first attraction the couple go is a scary one, but the couple enjoys it. Rather than being scared, the next one was a space theme, and at the exit, they met with Yanagi Sensei who tells them that she is there because of her colleague Taniguchi Sensei who invited her by winning two tickets. Tsukasa quickly catches the fact that maybe Taniguchi Sensei invited her to have a date, so she drags Nasa out since he has zero social intelligence and tells him about it. Later, they confirm it by seeing Taniguchi Sensei acting nervous around Yanagi Sensei, so they encourage him telepathically. Following it, they casually go to the same pirate theme attraction where they see both of the senses, so they talk about how Taniguchi Sensei may have a chance if he plays his deck correctly, but they aren't certain of that. In another waiting line, Taniguchi Sensei wants to explain that he didn't win the tickets but he bought them, and he wants to declare his love for Yanagi Sensei, however a teenager in front of them did it so he now can't do it since it would look uncomfortable. Our protagonist and his wife go to a buffet since it's noon, finally Chitos and her crew found them and want to watch them and see if they get bored at the buffet only to find out that they still flirt as Nasa proposes a game where they serve their food and exchange it in the table. When both finished, Nasa realized that the meal he prepared for his wife was terrible. So when he sees at the table the wonderful meal he would have, she stopped him, saying that the one he did was made with love, so she doesn't care. While this Chitos' crew wanted to go in, but they were stopped by Chitos who claimed that it would drag too much attention. At night, they're enjoying the firework festival. Meanwhile, both Sensei's are enjoying it too, and Yanagi Sensei tells him that she would love to enjoy more time with him, as she wants to spend the rest of her life with him, which she talking without thinking, but Taniguchi Sensei reciprocates her feelings by saying that he loves her too, so he finally conquered the unmovable mountain. Nasa has a special ability to keep other people's problems and help them when they are in trouble, in fact, without any special effort. That is what Tsukasa thought while he repairs Kaname's vacuum cleaner. Aya appears and asks Nasa's help as her grades are so bad that she needs a push, and to make matters worse at the end of the month, there are final exams, that's why Aya asks for the help of our hero. So Nasa decides to help her even though it won't be an easy task, as always he is content, not to worry about his efforts, but mainly about helping others' homes he likes that a lot and also thinks it's great. Sukasa is impressed that the fact that her husband never gets tired, he working on the computer, he hits the keyboard quickly without mercy. Another thing the young lady can't help but notice is the fact that our hero hasn't changed his posture since morning. On fact, when Sukasa leaves Nasa, he just pushes himself to the limit for anything and now his shoulders ache a bit more. Although he only admits it when his wife's worried about his health. So it's time for the massage, this is Nasa's first massage, and all the things she does to him are starting to turn him on Nasa's melting, and now he also wants to make his wife feel good, even though his men are not stiff, he still wants to massage her to thank her. However, she gets very flushed when she gets the message from her husband, who despite all this just rubs her shoulders. The month of June has become quite hot, but this does not stop Kaname who embarrasses Nasa with direct questions about their relationship with her home, asking for details about how long they are together and what they do. Our protagonist who wants to get the hell out of this conversation. Apparently, while searching through all the things her life out of tone on Twitter, she discovers that a kiss has a different meaning depending on the area you kiss and also prepare him a full list Nasa for him to enjoy all this moment to make it all night his thing. He wears more light clothes than usual, and Nasa starts to see a button of Universal News sites, but he needs a good plan to kiss his wife. The solution comes even much earlier than expected for Nasa, because Kanane gave the list to Tsukasa, and then they start a night full of kisses and tender until next morning. Weeks pass, and Kanane and Aya's mother arrive surprisingly, but Kanane receives her in a pretty cold way, which hurts her mother. Going back to the present, Kanane gifts Nasa some tickets for going to thermal waters as neither Aya nor Kanane couldn't go, but also her mother refuses to go because her honeymoon with the cheater of her husband was in thermal waters, so Nasa accepts being embarrassed about it. Firstly, Nasa talks with Tsukasa about the trip and the issue, and she also accepts to go. Kanane says her goodbyes while the couple goes on their first honeymoon. At the train, they talk about their expectations and how they get to relax. 
Upon their arrival at the place, they are shocked because of the huge place, and they compared it with the Arizugawa's bathhouse as it's too small in comparison. They go to their room and find out it's extremely luxurious, but they enjoy it in there. Masa tells Tsukasa to go to the bathroom, expecting to share the open bathroom they have in the bedroom, but they go to the communal one and are surprised by the luxury of them. After Nasa ends up having thoughts, he goes out to reunite with Tsukasa, but he finds an old woman who needs help going to reception, so he helps her. At the reception, she then wants to go to her room, and Nasa has a moral crisis, but agrees to help her anyway. On the way, they found Tsukasa, who reveals that the old lady is Tokiko Tsukiyomi, the one who agreed to their marriage and exposed her lies as she is not a frail older woman which Tokiko accepts, as she declares herself guilty because she wanted to mess up with Nasa. They go to Tokiko's bedroom and find that's massive compared to the one they're sharing which Tokiko explains that's because she is as rich as hell. They talk about why Tsukasa choose him and Tokiko founds out that Nessa is a kindred spirit, so she gives them a ticket for going to three thermal waters as a test. Also, Tokiko reproaches that Tsukasa doesn't express her love to Nessa and she should double it which embarrasses Tsukasa but arises the hopes and happiness of Nessa. The next morning, Nasa is reading a shujo manga where happens a rom-com-like accident where the protagonist sees the love interest taking a bath and Tsukasa arrives and models for him the kimono she got to rent, which is pretty beautiful. The first stop they have is Yubitake, an ancient place where they conduct traditionally with wood the thermal waters. The couple wanders around it as Tsukasa explains that that conduct converts the waters into thermal salts, and then they decide to buy an omiyage for Kaname and Aya. Next, the couple enjoys some thermal eggs and Nasa takes advantage to take photos of his wife while she's eating since she looks cute. As they wander, Nasa asks what relation Tsukasa has with Takiko, as she explains that Takiko is her tutor and take care of her for a long time, but she now is not worried anymore as she found out Nasa is a wonderful husband. Later, they wander until they go to a thermal water river and Nasa wonders why it's so difficult for both to get in the same bathroom if they're husband and wife, so when he thinks that he sees a sign that says mixed bathroom, so he wants to propose to go there, but Tsukasa refuses as she would die of embarrassment. Nasa finds himself cornered by the fact that it's difficult asking his wife to bath together at dinner. They enjoy a delicious meal, but after they rest their meal, Nasa grabs all of his braveness and finally asks Tsukasa to join him in the bath, and she accepts under the conditions that he must go first, but also that he can't turn the lights on. Finally, at the bath, Nasa wonders if he can be luckier than he is, and Tsukasa arrives and goes inside the tub. In the bathroom, they talk about how much they love each other, and Nasa teases Tsukasa's shyness, which led to a water splash fight between the two. The following morning, Nasa feels like the most fortunate man on earth while he is having his internal monologues. Tsukasa appears behind him, claiming to know what he is thinking about, so she tells him to go to bathe and reunite for breakfast. While eating, Nasa wonders why Tsukasa is sights so cold when being embarrassed, and he is right, so he talks about her bathing together. She is embarrassed only to him show Tokiko's ticket, and she scolds him for not telling her beforehand he was talking about it. After they visited all the bathrooms, Nasa tells Tsukasa if they could go to say their goodbyes to Tokiko, which Tsukasa replies that is not necessary only for Tokiko to appear and call her cold-hearted. Nasa proposes a photo of the trio and after that, while being alone, Tsukasa claims that this travel should only have memories of the two of them and Nasa proposed to do them right now. Going back to Tokyo, Nasa talks about how fast the time went and that he is happy that he shares his life with Tsukasa as Tsukasa claims the same. Then the pretty side of Nasa asks Tsukasa if they aren't at the thermal waters if she would share the same bath with him another time, which Tsukasa replies that is not a bad idea, and the two of them go back to Tokyo happy. The air conditioner of our main couple is broken. It is so tiring that it makes Nasa consider buying a new fan. Therefore, they go to the electronics store to purchase it. They buy a new fan and then head to the store of an old friend of NASA to find some tools for the air conditioner's insulation. To their surprise, NASA's old friend, Nakiri, is a young girl who was studied in the same high school class, so she is extremely astonished to discover that NASA is married now as he never expected him to be married at all. But now he admits that he wasn't interested in romantic stuff until he met Tsukasa and he can't imagine going back to not being interested. He's confident that his interest won't fade, and he plans to dedicate his life's love to her. Continuing with the story, the couple installed an air conditioner in their room because of the hot weather. They didn't realize a problem that occurs when using an air conditioner in their room as living with someone means small differences of opinion about the temperature. Whether it's too cold or too hot, they can never agree on the ideal temperature. The solution is number 26. The next morning, Nakiri, Nasa's friend, doesn't believe that Nasa is married. He visits his shop to thank Nakiri for helping with the air conditioning. She doesn't want to marry, but now that she is alone with him, she can finally learn something about that mysterious thing. In the beginning of July, Tukasa meets a mysterious young girl while working in the bathhouse. Kanem returns home from school and quickly reveals the name of this mysterious young woman called Kagami. She is Kanem's classmate, 
and had thought that there was a holiday that day so she didn't go to school, she has something important to tell Kanan. Kanan tells Tsukasa that Kagami can be a bit clumsy, and a kind and kind-hearted person seeing her concern for Kagami begins to be that she feels bad about her behavior and starts to talk to Kanan about her behavior. In the end, Tsukasa learns the importance of not to judge them for their appearance or awkward personality on their own. Kagami feels appreciated and valued by both of them and realizes that Kanan as well as Tsukasa are kind people. Later, Nasa's with his wife, but there is something hidden behind the scenes in effect. Did he do something to make her sad? He doesn't know, and this buzzes his mind. In difficult times, there is only one person who can save him is Kaname and her suggestions, so the shocking truth doesn't take long to break the air. A single word can have a different meaning for boys and girls. If Nasa has learned anything from their marriage, it's that for girls, it's very important how you express things. Now married, and there is only one and not many guys who can say nice words to her. That's why the suggestion on the day of every month that you never neglect a nice word to your wife, and Nasa is willing to do that. Quietly reading a lot of manga shows during her break, and he is tremendously absorbed, and Shukasa knows when she sees Nasa working so hard on something because his wife can't control herself and starts messing on her poor husband until the big question arises by itself. Because you start reading shoujo manga all of a sudden and is shy for no reason can't beat his wife's ingenuity, and so Nasa has to confess all about his secret entertainment, and so she starts messing with him by making him tell all the things he learned. Nasa compliments her beauty, personality, and spirit, which makes Tsukasa happy and flustered so happy that the next morning when helping a Khan, she is still smiling. A flashback occurs and a child is wandering around some ruins claiming not to have food and being worried about her future until a mysterious woman helps her first by comforting her and next by giving her ohaji. This flashback was from Takiko, who treasures this memory in the present. Elsewhere in the present, Tsukasa is having problems with the remote control and asks Nasa for help. He immediately knew it were the batteries, so when he finishes fixing the problem, Tsukasa asks if he considers she is stupid, which Nasa denies as he states that his dear wife has a fierce attitude and social intelligence because she can manage every kind of person and she is kindly hearted and has a beautiful soul. Following this, Tsukasa forgot her password and once again Nasa is the one who helps her making her feel dismissed, but this feeling is fixed when Nasa proposes to go for a cake. Later, Nasa talks about how beautiful his wife is and says she is good at cooking, so he eats tons of her food however, because of this he has gained weight, which seems to be the price of his marriage. Then he realizes that Tsukasa is quite slim as well as smelling very nice in her house. She is surprised by the sudden embrace and realizes that Nasa has put on weight, so she asks him about it. Although at first he denies it ends up telling the truth that it may be her fault that he has put on weight, but she says she did it because Nasa looks so cute when he was eating and also makes clear that no matter how much he gets fat, she will continue to think that Nasa is cute. However, Nasa quickly gets up and declares that he has to start exercising to lose weight by the time she gets home. Later, Tsukasa says that Nasa's mission is to run 10 kilometers every day, and Tsukasa asks Kanan if he could stand it. She tells him that he's relatively fit, considering he got perfect grades in everything, even in physical education, and Nasa says that he will be fine, but at the end of it all, with just one kilometer, he already feels tired nothing. He makes efforts to do an affection, but he can't do it, making his wife ask him if he wants help, to which he refuses, saying that as her husband, he has to be strong enough to protect his wife, even after struggling to make just a fraction of the pull-up. The chapter ends with Tsukasa saying that she saved him when they first met and that she will be the one to protect him. After that, they go to have lunch, but they're interrupted by Tokiko, who invites them to camp, but Tsukasa refuses. Unfortunately for Tsukasa, Nasa likes the idea of camping and wants to do it, but Tsukasa still refuses to be rude to Tokiko until she tells her that unlike other people, she is not eternal, so she doesn't know how much time she is here, which makes Tsukasa agrees. Before leaving, she gives them ohaji, a Japanese sweet that a certain girl gifted her 70 years ago. The next day, Tsukasa still doesn't want to go and tries to convince Nasa not to go, but Tokiko advertises the meeting with everything, even inviting Aya and Kanem, who are eager to go as they see that it's not camping outside like everyone else, but is in a private area, gambling zone. After every Tsukasa effort is in vain as Nasa wants to go gambling. Kuma joins the party and also Nasa's cousin, Ginga, who wants to redeem himself with Aya as he remembers how she was so shocked and ashamed the day he stayed in the men's bathroom asleep. Chitos and her maids will go as well as Chitos claims that Nasa isn't fit for these types of events. Time later, all of them are reunited seeing the route plan. There are two, one that is going on feet for four hours and the other one is going in the car. Kanem chooses the car as she claims that she has work to do but the others will go on feet. On their way, Aya realizes that is exhausting and Kuma gets behind the group so Shukasa goes to pick her up. But on their way, she explains to Kuma the kinds of poisonous mushrooms and a botanic class until she gets tired and both go to a shortcut. Nasa and the others are walking on the route and they find Chitos who claims that Shukasa is going to be fine as she isn't like any other girl and that's true since Shukasa fastly reaches the group claiming that they went by a shortcut. At the gambling zone, they're enjoying themselves. 
Far from everyone, NASA and Tsukasa start to talk until they're surprised by Takiko, who despite Tsukasa's tantrums, stays and claims that she bought this zone because they can see the stars almost like touching them and tells the importance of the intimacy between husband and wife, which NASA agrees as he thanks her for the invitation and compliments Tsukasa so much that is almost noticeable that he loves her deeply. Time later, Kuma disappeared and everyone is worried until Aurora explains to them that this is a closed area, so she can't be that far. Everybody goes in the search, even NASA who ends loose and goes to sleep on a rock because he is tired. Also, a few moments later is revealed that Kuma only went to the bathroom. At night, he is awakened by Tsukasa who found him and he immediately asks her why she put the condition of marrying for dating him. Tsukasa at first goes all mysterious about it until she opens herself up and confesses that it was a test to see how honest his heart was and she was grateful as she is happier than ever. Both of them proclaims their love for each other under the light of the full moon. At night, the group is eating dinner thanks to Tokiko, and suddenly there's a revelation to the group. This all along was the reception to Tsukasa and Nasa's wedding, as Kanemi narrates how Tsukasa and Nasa met and their reunion that lead to this happy marriage. Everyone clapped congratulating the couple. Tsukasa asks what is happening and Kanemi explains that she, Tokiko, and Nakiri gifted her a surprise reception. Tokiko assures it by telling her that she reunited all the people she loves there to make her feel a little embarrassed, and after a horrible PowerPoint presentation, she asks them to go to the scenario and bring a speech. Shikasa didn't want to as she was shy, so Nasa gives the speech by saying he wants to cherish the feelings for his wife along with the people he loves, so he thanks them for coming. Akei then shows another surprise. A cake and Tokiko puts a veil on Tsukasa and they both cut the cake as a married couple being grateful for the happiness the people around them bring them. Later, Nasa and the other stars see constellations, then he explains the constellations until they got bored of seeing stars. So Shikosa brings fireworks, which makes everyone go into it, leaving the couple alone, except for Chitos, who is an expert third wheeler, but Akam drags her away from them. Then they're reunited, and Chitos is a little opposed to celebrating, but Mesa explains that he still questions why they married, so he explains that humanity did it for love as they wanted to bond and grow strong together. Later, Tokiko walks away with Nasa and she confesses that she has the fault for Tsukasa not encountering him in his two-year wait, but Nasa doesn't care as he's still grateful that he married Tsukasa. Then he walks to the forest only to encounter his darling contemplating the moon and talk about how they are surprised by the reception. Nasa asks why she is married and she replies that no one lives forever so we must cherish the people we have at our side while cherishing the promises we made to them, referring to their friends and parents. Also promising eternal love and being repaid by NASA, both promises below the starring sky to love each other. They head back to the gambling where their friends prepared a special tent for them, so they just go back to the two alone. NASA is using all his might to think about only one thing, how to fool more time around as they are going to bed together anyways. So he starts goofing around with Tsukasa until they have to go to sleep, while in bed NASA and Tsukasa cuddle. The following day, Nasa wakes up earlier than Tsukasa and finds Tokiko in front of the river who offers him a pretty delicious coffee. They're enjoying the coffee until Tokiko claims him that this is an activity that he should be doing with his wife. They start to make toast and Nasa is surprised not only by the taste, but also by the way this lady is so detail-oriented when it comes to making these things, mentioning that she looks like Tsukasa. Grandma is about to reveal something to Nasa, but Tsukasa shows up and interrupts the conversation. She was attracted by the smell of toast and the camping day ended. They return home where he tells us what it felt like to be at a wedding reception. But in doing so, he remembers the words of his grandmother when she was trying to tell him something and that the landlady of his old house contacts him to tell him that he will soon be able to live there again. They go to see what it looks like and it's certainly more luxurious now where they point out that they now have Tina who remembers old experiences and the possibility of a bigger bed. They are already motivated to move into something that Kanem doesn't like since she won't be able to hear when they do their things. All over face that she will come to work so she won't feel lonely in the end living alone when she gets married, things are like Nasa hugging Tsukasa where she says that he doesn't know how to hug, giving a tutorial on how to hug someone of smaller stature, and we move on to Takiko, who remembers where Tsukasa told her that he would only stay with her for two more years. Having found her destiny, she takes the moon rock she sent to Tsukasa, feeling frustrated at not fulfilling Tsukasa's dream, only to collapse moments later. Returning to Nasa as her Tsukasa sleeps, she receives a distress call from Chitos, to which we see the two arrive with urgency as soon as they find out what has happened. Although we would see her as if nothing had happened, she gets up, so she is going to the bathroom and does other things while leaving Tsukasa playing and those Nasa decides to accompany her, where we now see her outside the hospital asking her if she is oak. Certainly, Grandma is not in the best of conditions and that is something that nothing she could notice. Nasa asks her what she wanted to tell her in the mountains. She stands up and tells her that she had a task to accomplish, but in the end, she discovered that she would not be the one to accomplish it. So to make that happen, she gives Nasa the moonstone, and as she says, is just an ordinary stone, but with it, she gives him her mission to make her Tsukasa happy no matter what. Nasa accepts this task without hesitation, 
And when Shukasa finds her and asks him to explain what the grandmother was talking about, she just pushes him, and as she leaves, Nasa tells her that he wants to make her happy for the rest of her days. After this incident, Nasa starts working in a high school after Yanagi sensei asked him for his programming skills and knowledge as she doesn't understand anything and doesn't have time, even less time because she can't even marry Taniguchi sensei because of it. So he agrees even when Yanagi sensei mentions that it's an only girl school as it isn't Nasa's school which commotions Nasa, but agrees anyways. At the school, he presents himself as an instructor and a student called Inuka asks him how old is he. Everyone goes nuts when he tells them his age as it's close to them. Sharugain, the class president, puts order and Nasa continues. Then Kurenai, another student, asks for his ring and he answers that he's married and everyone again goes nuts even harder, harder enough to call the attention of another sensei called Izaka, who scolds everyone. After that, Nasa tells the students to go search for him if they have any doubts about the subject, but everyone is engaged with him, not because of his subject, but because they believe he must be a charming guy. During the break, Kurenai gets close to him and asks him for love advice besides he was specific about questions about his subject. But after a conversation, he just goes vaguely as he realizes that the problem was that her boyfriend has wafers and is not real chick so he tells her that she must be patient with him, because it's probably that he's nervous and doesn't know how to spend time with her. Later another student joins them in the talk and asks him what is his name, the students go pale because of the ridiculousness of his name, but they cheer him up by saying that there is a student with a name almost as ridiculous as him. After the classes, Kanane talks with Nasa about how cute Chukasa would be being jealous as it's Sundier, which Nasa agrees hoping to see a jelly wife. Elsewhere, Ayak convinces Chukasa to let go of that cute side of being jealous, which hesitantly agrees. Meanwhile, the students are talking about how charming Nasa could be to being married, also pointing that he explains asking opinion to another student called Kaguya. On a night walk, Tsukasa let go of that sunder side of her and Nessa explains to her that she is unique in his life and he will never pay attention to any other woman as his love's interest once again claiming his love for Tsukasa who cheers up after that and without being noticed, two students of the high school sees them and love the act. The next morning, Nasa explains the deficiencies of each student through an amazing presentation showing statistics and defining the new method he's going to follow for improving their grades which fascinates the school's director proclaiming him the new specially appointed educator as the director sees the potential of Nasa. Later walking out of the school with Yanagi sensei, Nasa finds a chalkboard with an equation to the moon and adds what he considers the final equation, an equation to go back to Earth. While abandoning the classroom, Nasa expresses that he wants to meet the genius that wrote that stuff while Kabia arrives quietly. In the bathhouse, Nasa is talking with Sukasa, and they're interrupted by Kirinai, who is there because she has a message from their princess, Kavya. Later, a pop quiz is done in the girls' high school, even Kagia is taking the test, while Nasa explains to everyone the fundaments of it. Time later, Tsukasa thinks that Nasa also has spicy food cravings, and Nasa replies that she is the only one who does. Tsukasa replies that every single person has a spicy or cheesy craving, but Nasa doesn't. They decide to go for the spicy ramen for Tsukasa. Elsewhere, a student of Nasa called Miyako Haru is monologuing about how she has a face that no one knows as she is a ramen food critic on the internet. She is going to the ramen shop and has to share a table where her surprise is Nasa and Tsukasa who are also ordering ramen. In the end, Tsukasa and Haru order the super spicy ramen, but Tsukasa can't handle the spiciness, so Nasa volunteers as a tribute to sacrifice his ton for her, which hots Haru but not for the spicy ramen because of the cute dubs. At the bathhouse, Tsukasa remembers Haru, who was cute enough to gain her attention as she thinks about that Aya interrupts her thoughts by monologuing something about a girl robbing Nasa's heart and then proposes to combat fire with fire by dressing in a high school uniform but Tsukasa refuses. Thus, Aya uses her powers to convince Tsukasa once again and succeeds. In another place, Nasa is telling Kanam about the genius student he has and that he is looking forward to meeting her. But they're interrupted by Aya who tells Nasa to go shopping with his wife and he does only to see Tsukasa dressed as a high school girl from his school and Tsukasa is embarrassed so she doesn't want to go out so Nasa proposes to do their things behind the house so no one can see them. Time later, Aya asks Tsukasa if the uniform worked and she answers that yes it did. Then Aya proposes to Kaname and Tsukasa to dig a pond to dry it and both of them doesn't understand the babbling and foolishness of Aya. Then Aya goes to Nasa for help and he accepts even if he doesn't understand the purpose in Aya's mind. When they reunite every single tool, Aya and Kanaim can't help and Nasa asks Tsukasa to go inside, but Tsukasa stays outside as she wants to see Nasa doing manual work. At first, Nasa doesn't know how to even dig in the ground and ends up searching on Google how to use a shovel. He finally starts digging and time later, Tsukasa brings him soda and then Tsukasa gets turned on by seeing her husband so wild and sweaty. The next day, Nasa's muscles are still sour from the hard work. Suddenly, Kurenai stops him and asks him if he went directly to Harvard only for being shocked by the fact that Nasa barely graduated middle school. Then other students gather around him with the pretext of meeting more lessons and end up going them all to the bathhouse. 
There the students gather around Sukasa complimenting her beauty, and then as they realize they're in a bathhouse, they go inside after paying for their tickets and enjoy the baths, even go into the sauna. Meanwhile, Sukasa is troubled about the fact some students around her husband, but Kanam consoles her by saying that it's a great thing as it's probably that they trust her husband. When they go, Sukasa acts like it's Sundir only for Nasa to tell her that she is a lot cuter than the girls. Nasa and Sukasa were enjoying their happy marriage as usual until Nasa received a message from one of his students saying, I love you, which made Sukasa jealous and had problems till the same student eliminated that message. The next morning, Sharagain, the class of president, asked Nasa to come with her as Nasa thought it was for yesterday's incident and was correct. Sharagain cornered him and asked him for silence as she believed that Nasa would tell everyone about this incident, but after a little chat, she realized that Nasa was not like that. In fact, she asked for romantic advice as she was in love with a guy that beat up her friend's boyfriend to stop him from being a shikikomori, and she admired how manly and confident he was. At home, Nasa asked Sukasa for romantic advice, even though it was not his duty, and Sukasa had the brilliant idea of stock to learn his weaknesses and his likes as she told him that Shirogane was a cute girl so it wouldn't be as bad as a real stalker and commotions NASA because her double standard. Later, Sukasa is talking with Aya about her gaining 10,000 streamers on her channel but Sukasa is not interested at all. Suddenly, Jinga appeared and he started a discussion with Aya about privacy issues as Ginga sensed that he was being stalked. Sukasa once again goes with her double standard and tells him that a stalker is a stalker even when Jinga claims that it may be a cute girl she told him tells it won't matter as she needs to go down. Even after that, Aya doesn't believe that he has a stalker, so he proposes to simulate a date with her so that he has real enemies. Elsewhere, Shirogane and Nasa were talking about the guy while walking on their supposed way home until they saw Aya and Ginga acting like they were dating, and then we realized that Shirogane was in love with Ginga as she ran away heartbroken. Behind a bending machine, Shirogane was crying as she thought that he already had a girlfriend and Nasa approached her explaining that he knew them both and they were not dating which relieved Shirogane. Then Nasa cheers her up and advises her to confess in a dark alley. Meanwhile, Aya mocks Ginga about him lying about his stalker which enrages Ginga, and then he becomes more confident and tells her that if he goes to a dark alley, the stalker may appear. In the alley, Shirogane was gonna confess until the guy who wanted Ginga's blood appeared and he punched him which confused Shirogane. At that moment, Shirogane confessed but Ginga only thanked her and went away which confused her so much more. Sometime later, Sukasa was having a problem with her jealousy, and her inner self was fighting about it, as she didn't want to distrust Nasa in his new job. Meanwhile, Nasa was talking with one of his students about how Sukasa may be jealous, as normally the cold people have the most inner crazy feelings. Later, Sukasa tried to stalk Nasa. Both of them hugged each other until the same students surprised them and told them that they had no shame, which made them both embarrassed, and Sukasa went away home. On her way home, she found Kaguya, who told her if her travel was coming to an end, which commotioned Sukasa. Some night Kaguya was awake seeing the moon recalling a long forgotten dream about a girl pleading for help from the moon. So we go back to Kirane's past as she recalls how she met Kaguya. Thinking about Kaguya as a genius, she could have exam answers like nothing. As time passed, she realized she was a genius but a lonely and neglected one as her parents didn't take care of her and she lived with her elderly grandparents until they both died. When this happened, Kirane decided to take care of her and go to visit her every morning. They all become friends with Kaguya, starting with Yusu Mishio, who asks her why she used a mask, and Kaguya tells her that it was because the Earth's atmosphere was too toxic for her. Even with that weird answer, Kurenai spends her time with her as she respects her dreams and she feels sorry for her, as Kaguya stated that she has no dreams or ambitions. Sometime later, Sukasa rethinks the incident in the bamboo forest until Aya interrupts her thoughts by telling her some harsh truth. She doesn't tell Nasa that she loves him regularly, and it's spoiled by his love. This shocks to Tsukasa and tries to prove him wrong only for her at night to prove that she is being so pampered that she can't even tell Nasa she loves him she asks instead why he loves her. The next morning, Aya appeared again with the same claim but Tsukasa this time bounced off the argument by telling her that it's not necessary because married people can read each other's minds. So Aya doesn't believe a single word of it along with Nasa's students and Mio. One of them tells her that if she can't tell him that she loves him then she can do it by action, which enrages Tsukasa who claimed that if they aren't going to bath then be gone as this was a bathhouse and the crowd do so. That same night, Tsukasa does so but asks Nasa to close his eyes, kisses him, and tells him that she has still there and then goes to sleep making Nasa awake all night wondering what was he supposed to do. So the next morning, instead of Aya, it's Kanem who brings along a classmate named Kazumiya and shows her how easy it can be to say, I love you and take me by only creating the right atmosphere for it. But Tsukasa doesn't think so and Kanem gives her two coupons for ice cream and recommends her to try. The married couple went to buy ice cream surprising each other by knowing exactly what flavor they were gonna choose. Anyways, at the park eating, Tsukasa is overcome by the guilt and kisses Nasa a lot of time which kills Nasa by her cuteness and tells her that he doesn't care if she doesn't tell him that she loves him, he will always loves her which moves Tsukasa's heart. After that, Nasa had a dream where he was in the Horyuji temple and he was a lord emperor, 
He found Tsukasa who was surprised by how he referred to her. As they talked, Tsukasa acted like they were going to say their farewells, which scared Nasa who woke up crying and running to find her. When he found her, both Tsukasa and Kanane were worried about him crying until he revealed that it was because of his scary dream, which was cute for Tsukasa. Then them both hugged each other as Tsukasa also remembered that she also had a dream, memories from a long journey that now has ended and Nasa now.